Good day and happy Sabbath. It is a privilege to once again share a message with you. And the message for today is entitled Chosen by God. Now, beloved, this is a topic that is way deeper and way broader than even a full week would allow us to discuss. But I'm going to condense this as much as possible. And I will pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you and ultimately move within you as this topic is discussed. I would like to just read for our scripture reading a verse from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 to 12. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. And it reads as follows. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers to abstain from fleshly lusts, which wage war against the soul. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles, so that in the thing in which they slander you as evildoers, they may, because of your good deeds, as they observe them, glorify God in the day of visitation. Now you might remember that previously I mentioned that Peter wrote this letter in order to encourage the saints, in order to help them to keep the faith, in order to keep their eyes fixed upon Jesus. Now today we are going to expound practically on how this should look in the everyday life of the Christian. First things first, the fact that we are chosen by God as a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and people for God's own possession, means in actual fact that our identity is now not find, found in ourselves, but rather found within God. The phrasing that Peter uses should bring to mind the Old Testament account of Israel leaving Egypt, leaving slavery and oppression to be delivered by God for the greatness of God. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5 to 6 reads, Now then, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own possession among all the peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the sons of Israel. Notice that the condition for the statement is found in the relationship aspect. Keep my covenant. That is an actual fact, beloved. The same as saying, remain faithful to my desire to have a meaningful, intimate relationship with you. Do not take this relationship for granted and do not abuse it for your own pleasure or ultimately even your own benefit. But this relationship is designed to glorify God and edify his church. Notice that as such, our identity once again is deeply rooted in our relationship with God. Now, we are a chosen race. It has the element of being treasured. And this is precious to the one who does the choosing. In this case, God. It is due to this reason that we can find comfort in the fact that God has chosen us to form part of his family. Paul uses this imagery that we have been adopted as God's children. We are chosen, not just to be frivolously used by God, but to love, to, to have communion with. But secondly, we are tasked with a sacred duty. God has tasked us with a duty that caring, blessing, and revealing the heart of God to others would ultimately be what we are to do. We are to spread the principles of God's kingdom to those around us. 
Beloved, if we look at the work that the priests had to do in the Old Testament, we find that they basically were responsible for bringing people to God and revealing God's heart to the people of Israel. And you might be wondering what this looked like practically. Look at the life of Jesus, loving the outcast, caring for the sick, defying the social norms and restoring justice as much as we can. That is our sacred duty. We are equipped, beloved. God set us apart from the rest of the world in order to perform our duty. However, we are not to show preference to anybody, but we are to love all. Peter shares this notion in 1 Peter 2 verse 17. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God and honor the king. Lastly, beloved, we are redeemed. We are redeemed to belong, belong to God so that we can effectively proclaim the excellencies of God. How we received and accept the mercy of God. But beloved, also how we are accepted into the fold of God. And that is a message we can proclaim to the world, not because we know it, but because we've experienced it. Notice the beauty of this, of, of this transformed life. It is when those seeking to cause harm to us or to God even will only end up glorifying him in the process because they find us to stand blameless. My mind is drawn to people like Joseph who was arrested, thrown into prison, and ultimately we find that he ended up being second in charge in all of Egypt. We think of Daniel or his three friends who were thrown into a fiery furnace or into a lion's den, where also they ended up being in powerful positions to bring about change in Babylon and even Medo-Persia. Ultimately, beloved, we should allow our life to testify of God's goodness. So if we think about this topic of being chosen by God, it doesn't just give us the license to do as we please. But the reality is, beloved, we are chosen by God in order to reveal God to this broken world. And that is the glory of the gospel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful that we have been chosen by you. We are grateful that we can move forward as a powerful force, knowing that we have not only been chosen, but we have been equipped. We have been tasked with a sacred duty. And ultimately, Father, we have been redeemed for a specific purpose. May we not abuse this fact that we are chosen. May we not take that for granted, but may we share it with the whole world because we are excited about what this means. We pray this in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Have a blessed day further, beloved, and may God bless you as we enter a new week. Goodbye.